Praise the Lord and good morning to you once again. Um, welcome to the K3C morning devotion. Uh, this month uh, we have started out, uh, this is the third in the series of our morning devotions as we are talking about the promised Holy Spirit. Uh, there is no greater subject than this than to talk about the Godhead. Uh, we started out on Monday saying that the Godhead is mysterious. It is, in fact, without controversy that it is a, a great mystery. Uh, godliness is a great mystery. And when we talk about the Godhead, we talk about uh, the Holy Spirit, talk about Jesus, talk about the Father. Those are uh, huge topics. They are mighty and, 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 and wonderful, perhaps uh, too wonderful even for our entire comprehension. We only are able to uh, get what has been revealed to us. Uh, what the scripture reveals to us about the Godhead. And even that is dynamic and wonderful. We have seen that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is uh, he's intimately involved with us and he is useful to us. Uh, he is part of the plan that God has to bring us into fruition and into the fullness of what we can be. And it is important that you and I then begin to understand and know who this, that the Spirit is. Uh, we talked about uh, the Holy Spirit on the first day. On Monday, we talked about uh, his, his personality. We talked about how some of his attributes and how he, he is a person. He is not just a force. He is not just an essence. He is a person who has feelings. And he is a person who is part of the Godhead, the Trinity, and is working. Uh, he is the power uh, behind the Godhead and we bless the Lord that uh, he has given us uh, the privilege to know the Holy Spirit in such a personal way. On the second day we decided to look at uh, what uh, the scriptures, the old uh, covenant, the old testament speaks uh, about Jesus and we looked at how Ezekiel uh, uh, prophesied and said that there would be a new spirit that uh, God would put inside of us. We talked about Joel and how Joel prophesied and said that they, they will come a day when gender will not be so much, age group will not mean so much, uh, neither will social standing be such a hindrance because the Spirit is coming upon us. Uh, we talked about uh, mighty things and, and waiting and saying that we are waiting for the second, uh, uh, for, 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 for the Holy Spirit to fill us. Uh, we have seen that the Old Testament spoke about those things. Today, we want to talk about the New Covenant. We want to talk about the New Testament. What, the, what does the New Testament say? We know in our studies and uh, some of the sermons that we have had that the Old Testament or, or the New Testament is actually the Old Testament revealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. What is seen in the New Testament is the same thing that has been going through the ages and God has been revealing himself slowly by slowly. Uh, it, it's step by step and it's gathering momentum up until the final day when we shall see Jesus as Lord and as King. And this is the final, it's a journey, it's a story of the redemption of man by God and none else. And uh, even as God is redeeming us back to himself, he is using the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is imperative that you and I then look and see and understand what it is that the New Testament is speaking uh, about this that is a promise. I want us very quickly to go into our Bibles in John chapter number 14. John chapter 14 from verse 16 right until 18. And this is what the Bible says. Uh, this is uh, Jesus speaking. And you know that every time that Jesus speaks, we need to all have our ears picked. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. See, Jesus is saying this, and he's telling his disciples is telling the people who are there listening to him that he is in contact with the Father. And again, we are seeing the three-dimensional aspect, the three-dimensional uh, uh, trinity in, in effect. God, Jesus, the Son, is saying, I will speak 
to the Father, and that he will then send us the Spirit. Uh, there is the three of them again. If there's anyone who has doubts about this, these are the things, these are the scriptures that we should be looking at and saying, really, this has been uh, spoken about, and there, is, there definitely is three in one. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. Listen, the another counselor. The world cannot accept him. No wonder we have this theology and debates about these things because the world cannot accept this that we are bringing to, 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 to them. Uh, this we are talking about God, a, a, a spirit being who they have nights they have not seen. They don't know him. There will obviously be resistance. And, and Jesus is saying, yes, the world cannot accept him. The world cannot accept this other counselor. No, because it cannot see him. And the world system, as we have heard in the recent summons, the world system operates in what is seen, what can be tangible, what can be uh, accessed by our, our five uh, senses. You know, That is what the world accepts. If it is not accessible by our five senses, the world thinks it is not true. The world thinks it is not there. But we know him. In fact, Jesus says, you know him. Why? Because he lives with you and will be in you. I'm encouraged by this statement because it's a prophetic statement that Jesus is making. He says that another counselor will be given. Another counselor. Meaning that there's, a, there's yet a, a first counselor. That reminds me of this wonderful Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah says that uh, was prophesying in Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse number 6. He said that Jesus was going to be born. This one that is going to be born is going to be called some names. One of those names was Wonderful Counselor. So Jesus is our Wonderful Counselor. He is the first Counselor. No wonder he says he will give you another Counselor because Jesus is the first Counselor. And he is not just any counselor. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the one who is able to counsel us, to give us advice. He is able to teach us and to instruct us in the way in which we, we ought to go. This is uh, uh, Psalm 32 and verse number 8. This is what the scripture says. I will teach you. I will instruct you in the way in which you need to go. And I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. This is what the Bible says. Jesus is our wonderful counselor. It means that he's a counselor of dynamism. He's an, an extremely good, awesome, great counselor. To say wonderful, it means that the counsel that he gives us is beyond our understanding, is beyond our thinking. Yes, just like we read in Isaiah 55 and verse number 8 and 9, his thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are, are, are phenomenally different from us. But he is a wonderful counselor. Jesus is. But then we now have another counselor, which is the Holy Spirit. He will send us another counselor. And the Spirit is a counselor to the same degree that Jesus is a counselor, meaning that he's also a wonderful counselor. Any quality of God, the Godhead has it. If he is good, if God the Father is good, God the Son is good, and God the Holy Spirit is good. If God is good... It, it, it means it is that. If God the Father or God the Spirit, the, the Son is, is a wonderful counselor, it means that the Holy Spirit too is a wonderful counselor. And therefore God is saying, and this is a promise, that God is going to send us a wonderful counselor. He is another counselor. He is another counselor. He's also going to send us, just from this text that we're reading, John chapter 14, he's going to send us the Spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. He is the one that powers truth. Ah, ah. He is the one who reveals truth. Hey, Pilate asked a question, what is truth? Ah, the Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. And Jesus says, as he comes, uh, he will come and he will reveal all truth. John chapter 16 and verse number 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, uh -huh, he will guide you into all truth. Not just a bit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. I need this Holy Spirit. I need this power. I need this power. He will not speak on his own. No, this spirit is not coming to speak on his own. But he will speak only what he hears. He will speak only what he hears the Father say. Because it's the Father who says. What the Father says, the Son says. What the Son says, the Spirit says. And therefore the Father is the top in the line. And the Spirit, when he says he will speak 
only what he hears and will tell you what is yet to come. The spirit of truth, the spirit who reveals truth, the spirit who unleashes and, and brings us the truth. This one is what the promise, the, this the New Testament is promising. The spirit of truth is coming. Oh, I want this spirit. I want this truth. I want this Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that this spirit, that he's, he's going to be given to us and he will be with us forever. Oh, he is not only coming for a moment, he will be with us forever. Once he is with us, he is sealed with us. Yes, Ephesians chapter 3, verse of chapter 4, sorry, verse number 30 says, Do not grieve the Spirit with whom you are sealed up until the day of redemption. You are sealed with him. In fact, Jesus says, He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He's going to be sealed with us forever. It means that we will have a wonderful counselor with us. It means that we will have the spirit of truth with us. It means that he is with us not just for a moment, but he is with us forever. Oh, I need this spirit. If at all there is anyone, and I, I am bringing this so that you may begin to also see the need of the spirit in your life, the need of your spirit. The New Testament is testifying that this spirit, this one that is called the spirit, the Holy Spirit, is useful to us. And we'll be, uh, we, in, in the coming days, we're also going to be talking about the usefulness and, uh, and, and the works uh, of the Spirit, as, as I know that already you're going to be hearing on Sunday, and uh, this Sunday past, and, and, and even the, the one that is coming. Let us look at another scripture, Luke chapter number 3 and verse 16. And this one is now uh, 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 speaking. Uh, John the Baptist is speaking about this that is coming in terms of the spirit, John chapter, uh, Luke chapter 3 and verse number 16, John the Baptist answered them all. He says this, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Again, this is prophetic about the thing that is coming, about the, the, the fire and the Holy Spirit that is coming. And, and, and John the Baptist is speaking to disciples, his own disciples. He's speaking about one that is greater than himself. And listen, the Bible, my Bible tells me that John the Baptist was a great man. In fact, it is testified that he was perhaps the greatest. Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 11 says, I tell you, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John. No one greater than John. Among men born of women, none is greater than John. How amazing is that kind of statement? That is an amazing statement. But yet he goes on to say, yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Listen, Jesus is saying that when you come in to a baptism, when you are baptized and when you are filled by the Spirit of God, you are then translated into another kingdom. This is the kingdom that we have been talking about in the, in, in the, in the recent past. We have been talking about the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, when you are in the kingdom of God, you are even greater. The least in that kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. All we need, how we need this that is called the Holy Spirit. This that was prophesied. This is the system of, uh, of, 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 of winning. This is a system of victory that God has set for you and me. That we may be filled with the Spirit. We may be baptized by the Spirit. That we may be translated into this that is called the kingdom of God. That we may then begin to operate. Listen, Jesus is promising to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hey, the Holy Spirit and with fire, to baptize us with fire. We have seen and we will see in the coming days the, the reality of this that is called the Holy Spirit baptism. When it comes, sometimes it has come with fire and we have seen the fire of the Lord settling on people's heads. We have seen tongues of fire on people's heads. We have seen tremendous things that are recorded in the scripture. And I tell you that there is something that we're looking forward to. There is something amazing that we're looking forward to in terms of being filled with the Spirit. So the New Testament is also speaking about this. John the Baptist is saying, there is one who is greater than me, and he will baptize you with 
hold the Holy Spirit and a fire. I am only using water, but there is one that is greater. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, again we see Jesus has been talking to his disciples. He's been speaking to his disciples after his, uh, his, 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 his ascension. Well, he has resurrected and he has come out and he has been seen among people. Forty days he was talking to people, telling them about the kingdom of God. He was speaking to them about these things, exciting their hearts as they began to realize they were at the threshold of something new. And as they were waiting for this to happen, he told them, listen, they, you have to wait. Wait, tarry, wait, tarry. Acts number one and verse number eight, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That the Jesus is prophesying to them, and he's telling them that they need to wait. They need to hang out. They need to, 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 to be, in, to, 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 to be uh, basically worshiping the Lord, and they are waiting, and they are tarrying, waiting upon the Lord, serving the Lord in worship. Because that is what waiting is. It is serving the Lord in worship. And as we are waiting and tarrying and waiting for him, ah, the Bible says that he will surely come. And this is the prophecy that you will then receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This was prophetic, that the Spirit was going to come. And when he came, that there was going to be power. And number two, then they were going to be witnesses. They were going to be the witnesses of God. Or to be a witness is to be somebody who stands in a court of law and is able to give a story, a corroborating story concerning the things that have happened. And you can say, listen, I was there. I saw it with my two eyes and therefore I am a witness. I experienced it and therefore I am a witness. And therefore God is saying that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will be corroborating the things that Jesus has spoken about in the word. We will be able to manifest the glory of God. Where God says that healings can come, we shall be witnesses of that. We are the instruments that will heal. Our hands are instruments that will heal Oh, things that are happening in the world. In the realm of this that is the natural, we will be instruments that will be able to carry the presence of God anywhere and everywhere. And it says that this will happen when we receive power as the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Listen, these are things that are pointing us to a fact that a known, very, very well-known fact that we need the Spirit of God. We need to be empowered. We need to be filled. We need to be baptized of God, of the Holy Spirit. And all of these things are pointing us in this direction that we need to be seeking out and saying, Lord, oh, we need to be filled of your Spirit. It's a promise. John chapter number 7, um, uh, in verse number 37 and to, to, to 39, on the last day, and uh, the greatest day of the feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, that is, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice that if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within them. Ah, by this, what did he mean? He meant that the spirit whom those who had believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. This is Jesus talking. And as Jesus talks again, we need to look and to see. He is saying that there is a difference that will come. And he's saying, if anybody is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in the scripture, rivers, streams of living water will flow from within them. Oh, by this, he was meaning that the spirit, ah, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, would descend upon people, would descend upon people in such a manner that their lives would be so transformed that they would then be able to be gushing out, gushing out with living water from their hearts and from their minds, from their souls, from their spirit. You know, streams of living water would be able to come forth out of them because the spirit has been on them. Jesus is saying that there is a place for the spirit there is a place for the Spirit of God to come forth and to even be seen evident. It's a promise of God. He says, those ones who are thirsty, all of these things that we are telling you, 
hopefully has been building a thirst in you, has been saying, Lord, I am tired of the normal, the ordinary, the usual. I am tired of these things and I want the supernatural. I want to move into this place or oh, where I can find oh, I can find this drink and take of it or oh, that I can partake of this that is of the spirit. Therefore, then streams of living water will flow out of me. This is what Jesus is saying. He's prophesying. And all of this, this is the New Testament again. We are saying that this day we are talking about the prophetic uh, word of God in the New Testament about the coming of the Holy Spirit. We have seen it traced from the Old Testament. The story is the same in the New Testament. Whatever has been said in the Old Testament is true and is real in the New Testament. And therefore, you and I ought to be one of the people who are saying, Ha! I want this. I want this. I want this. I am thirsty. John chapter number 3, uh, uh, Jesus is talking to one that is called uh, 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 Nico, Nicodemus. Is it Nicodemus? Uh, oh, yes. It's Nicodemus in, in, in chapter 3. Uh, and, and Jesus is telling him that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. This is John chapter 3 and verse number 3. And, and then Nicodemus goes on to ask him, but how can a man be born when he is old? And Nicodemus, uh, uh, he, 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 surely, he says, surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb. Jesus answers him and tells him, the truth, uh, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is, number one, born of water, and number two, and the spirit. Why? Because flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, Spirit gives birth to spirit. Oh, you should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound. Ah, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone born of the spirit. There is a thing about being born of the spirit. And Jesus is saying there is a distinct difference. There's two things. There's two births. There's a birth with water. This first birth of water is you coming in to, 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 to the earth. You are born of water. But the second one is that one of the Spirit. Though you must be born of the Spirit. You must be filled of the Spirit. You must be baptized of the Spirit. You must be into the things of the Spirit because that is the key. This is one of the keys that will move us forward in this life. And God has been giving us and been speaking to us about this promise. And this promise, all of his promises, the scripture says, are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. So long as you're in Christ Jesus, every promise that you find in the scripture can be yours. Every promise is available for you. So as this one, this one that says that the spirit of the Lord can come upon you. The spirit of the Lord can come upon you and fill you. Today, I feel that we need to pray a little. We need to pray and ask God to come and to fill our lives. We need to pray and ask God to come and to be three things in our lives. So these things that we have, we, we have seen, number one, that he may be the counselor, that he may be our counselor. You see, any time that we pray, it is taking back the word of God to himself. Anytime you find something that you have seen and you have said, oh, I have seen this in the scripture, you can take it back to the Lord and say, Lord, I have seen this about, about you. And Lord, I want to claim it in my life. Let it come forth. So we want to pray today, number one, that we may be counsel, we, he may be our, a counselor for us. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you may be the wonderful counselor. This uh, that is called Jesus, uh, the, 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 called the Holy Spirit. Father, we need your spirit. We need your spirit of truth to come. We need your spirit of power to come. We need your spirit, Lord, to come over us today, even in the name of Jesus. We want to declare, O oh God, that you are our counselor, that, Lord, that you are the one who is showing us the things that we ought to do. You are in us, and you will lead us to all truth. You shall counsel us. You will teach us, instruct us, and show us and counsel us even in the way in which we ought to go. Father, we are claiming this day that we are counseled of you, that we are led of you, that we are led of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, second thing we want to pray for is, Lord, that you may, you may be the spirit of truth for us, that you who powers truth, you who reveals truth to us, that you may reveal truth to us, O oh God, that we may understand the truths of God. Father, for we know that in our understanding of these truths, we, our lives shall never be the same again. 
as we begin to partake of truth, as we begin to partake of the knowledge of the truth, Father, our life shall become fruitful. Yes, for we know that the, even as we are partaking of truth, fruitfulness begins to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, King of glory. We are praying, O oh, King of glory, that you would cause us to have streams of living water flowing out of us. Father, we want to affect the things and the people around us and, 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 and about us. We know that when the Spirit comes upon us, uh, you will, He will cause streams of living water to flow out of us, meaning that we will be able to affect uh, everything and anything that is around us. And Father, now we are declaring all oh, that streams of living water, of living water, of living water shall come from us. That Lord, the things that are dead in our lives, the things that are dead in our circumstances, the things that are dead in our families, the things that are dead, oh God, in, 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 in our city, the things that are dead in our country, in our nation, in this world, Father, that these streams of living water shall be able to change, shall be able to, 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 to cause life to come forth, oh God. We are praying this, Lord, because we know that you are hearing us now. We are saying that this day, Lord, that you may fill us. We are, we are, we are waiting for you, oh Holy Spirit. We are waiting for you to fill us today we will tarry here we will wait over here oh god as we as we seek you because you are the promised spirit you were promised to us a while ago you were promised to us even as we have read in the old testament you were promised from time ancient and now is our time now is our season now is the latter time for the latter rain and we're saying lord won't you rain upon us lord won't you come upon us lord, Lord, won't you fill us? Won't you baptize us? Won't you dunk us into yourself, into your very presence? For we know that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy at your right hand. There are mercies new every morning. There are pleasures there, oh God. And we are praying today that you may just fill our lives fill our bodies. Those ones who are down are feeling low, feeling under the weather. Today we are saying in Jesus name the spirit comes and when the spirit comes bubbling and joy shall be your portion. Yes, the kingdom of God is not uh, about eating and drinking. It's about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we are declaring today righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost is your portion. Oh, joy in the Holy Ghost is your portion. Peace is your portion where you have been in terms well, peace is your portion now. I am declaring it upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for this that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Even this week, we will tarry as we await you. We will tarry as we wait, uh, even for your miraculous move. Lord, we are longing for you. Lord, we are longing for you. Father, we are longing for you. We need you in our lives. Won't you be that power? Won't you be that, that glory? Won't you be that promise that we have read in the scripture? We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we believe and pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a tremendous day. The Lord is in charge.